This is why I don't brush my hair. Um, hey everyone, so I have been pay posting pretty much like once a week, which is not good enough when I'm on a half, like I'm on a summer holidays and I technically should have all the time in the world to be posting. Um, but I'm making, this is a making tea video because I know you guys like it. I have some things I want to talk about, um, and, uh, some explaining to do as to why I haven't really been around that much. So, um, yeah. Firstly, as to why I haven't, um, been posting as much as I really should have done, um, is because I'm having a hard time with, uh, my Crohn's medication. It's making me tired, but tired is an understatement. So it's not like you wake up and you haven't got much sleep and you don't really feel very refreshed. It's like you wake up more tired than when you went to sleep, even though you were exhausted when you went to sleep. And it's like there's weights in your bones. That I didn't take my medication last night because I knew I wanted to do things today, um, which I know is bad, but I, I needed to, to do things. So I was like, I need to get out of bed today for, for some reasons. Um, it's like, but even now this hurts holding up my phone. Um, <laughs> and it's where I'm so tired when I wake up in the morning. It's like I can't move my body or my bones. It took me yesterday about three or four hours to make myself get out of bed just so I could go and wash my hair and have a shower because um, I hadn't washed my hair in like uh, five days. Now, if you know me, you will know that I shower twice a day and my hair is washed every other day because I can't stand, like I'll go on a night out never slept in my makeup before i will go on a night out and take off all my makeup have a sh shower and a hair wash because i can't like get into bed feeling like dirty um but i've been so and even when i'm in really depressed stages um and i don't feel like moving i still try my best to manage to get up and wash because um just like i have to it's a thing that makes me feel like a human however I just haven't been able to with the uh, level of exhaustion and I look terrible I know I look terrible um, but like I don't I don't feel the need to put on makeup for this kind of video because I'm like this is where I'm gonna be honest about how life's going for me so because of all these things I haven't been able to do much I guess um, I've been really um, just bed bound the only thing I have really been doing is sewing um, if you follow me on Snapchat, I post an obnoxious amount of updates on my cosplays. Um, and I actually have a sewing Instagram account now, uh, Laura's Always Sewing. So if you want to go follow that, um, if you're vaguely interested in my cosplaying and stuff like that. Um, but I, I just, it's been the one thing that's keeping me going at the moment because um, I sew every single day and I just see such an improvement. I've only been properly sewing for like three months. And I'm making things I could, like, never have dreamed of making before. And, um, it's, like, makes me happy to see myself, like, getting better at something when my whole life is sort of deteriorating before me. It's frustrating because I want to get a summer job and I wanted to address the fact that, um, a lot of people... I see a lot of people being like, oh, I hate, like, teenagers that don't get a job and, like, they're just being lazy and stuff. And I've worked for two years, um, at Waitrose. Um, and I, that was, like, I was working at college and also doing, um, my dancing as well. And so this summer I haven't been able to get a job because I like I just can't and my body won't let me do it. Um, on the rare occasion that I do go out and do something, although I do have like a ridiculous amount of plans now for certain things and my summer is just confined, I'm just stressed about all of this. You know, it's very hard on my body to be able to do these things. <clears throat> and um See, so yeah, I wanted to address that because I I want everyone to know that I'm not being lazy by not getting a proper job this summer. Um, I if I if I could, I would 100% be working. Um, unfortunately, because like you know, I I didn't I had a job before and I liked having money to be able to go out and do things, but I'm just broke at the moment because um I don't have any income obviously, um and I just want to get back to uni and get back into a a cycle of um like a routine I guess where I actually you know have a life and do things every day um but I'm concerned about my health and how I'm gonna get there um it doesn't okay so now I'm moving on to the main I guess I've rambled for a little bit too long but I'm moving on to the main sort of thing I wanted to discuss in this video which was um talking about representations of mental health i.e I don't know if anyone's watched to the bone um I watched it uh, the night came out, 
um, and for me, I didn't find it too triggering. Um, the first 10 minutes were very, very hard to watch and I almost turned it off. And then I was like, no, persevere, like, you can do this, like, don't worry about it. Because at the moment, I've been very focused on weight loss, which hasn't been helping the tiredness, admittedly, because some days I'm eating very little, but I just can't help it at the moment. This is just what's happening. And, like, since the beginning of summer, I think I've lost about £10, which isn't as much as I would have liked. Uh, but, you know, I'm trying to do it safely this time. Um, and watching to the bone was, I think some people would find it triggering, I didn't personally see my, like, eating problems portrayed exactly because I've never been in impatience and I've never been uh, severely underweight. You know, if anything, I relate more to, I binge eat so that I relate more to the, like, bigger girl that was in the, in the house. Um, but I know people that did see themselves massively in um, Eli's character and I can see why it'd be triggering for them, although some of them have said it wasn't triggering, some said it was. I felt the ending and everything was very hopeful, taking the step towards recovery. Yes, it was unsatisfying emotionally, but I think that was the point. Um, and I just wanted to quickly address that and say to everyone, if you're considering watching it and you have had an ED and you think it'll be triggering, um, be careful, like turn it off if you need to turn it off. Um, I don't think it's necessary to watch it if you've got an ED, but then also I think if you're in the steps to like recovery, the ending is crucial because it, it takes you on that journey and you can sort of see the effect it has on other people. For me, I felt a lot of guilt, I guess, and I've heard that from a lot of people that you feel a lot of, uh, sort of guilty about it, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like, yeah. Now, I want to talk a little bit about like sort of moving on and stuff because I moved a few bits and pieces, really not much at all, into my new uni house. I got my keys and stuff and it was a weird day. We drove past uni, which didn't feel like uni because I'm struggling with uh, associating anything that happened there with myself or realising that any of the things that happened to me there actually happened to me. Like I, It feels like something I've made up or it feels like a distant... I don't know, it just doesn't feel real, um, which I guess is part of the fact that, you know, I've been really disassociating recently. Um, I, I Not as bad as I have done in the past. My depersonalisation and stuff has been terrible in the past, and recently it hasn't been too bad, and I don't know if that's because I just don't really leave the house, so I've got nothing to really disassociate myself from or feel spaced out from because I don't leave. I stay here, and it's very day-to-day -day for me. Um, however... Um, that or I feel disassociative when I think about uh, the past. So when I moved into my new house, I um, I wanted to get some sort of feeling for it because um, usually when I'm feeling disassociative, whatever, I just don't feel any emotion towards anything. You know, kind of the same with when I'm depressed. Um, but like when I've been sewing and putting together um, cosplays and stuff, when I put the fabric, like when I'm making my Cinderella cosplay at the moment live action, when I put like all the fabric together when I see it starting to take shape I get this amazing feeling like in my chest that I'm like it makes feels like so inspired and, like it sounds very really cringy but I get this amazing feeling when I see like something really beautiful come together like something that I've made and it's like a really proud but like oh my god like look at it it's so amazing and pretty like I get the like best feeling from it and that's one of the things that's really like kept me sewing at the moment because I do like when I started sewing the beading onto my um bell cosplay like I was like I got the same feeling and it's just like really fun so I thought I'd been starting to feel things a bit more recently and I guess that's I, my antidepressants meds have been the dosage has been up so I didn't know if it was because of that or whatever but when I got to the new house I just and I guess I felt this when I first looked around the new house I didn't feel I still I didn't feel anything. I got a slight bad feeling, which is ominous. When I first went to look around the house, I was concerned um, because I was like, I don't, I, I don't have a good feeling about this. But I didn't want to say this to like obviously my flatmates or anything like that. Um, I feel like I might have said it to Regan and Regan was like, yeah, I feel you. Like I don't, I, but I can't remember what exactly happened there. But like usually, I've really, I can't open my sugar. This is probably a sign telling me I shouldn't be putting sugar in my tea. I've got it down to one rather than two now. I just had a bit of an ominous, not really an ominous. I just didn't really feel like home. Um, and 
when I started moving bits into my room, like my room is so beautiful at uni, like it's really lovely. It's got like this really stunning like semicircular window, and I I, I love it. But I started to move my stuff in, and it felt weird. It, it didn't feel like like when I first <laughs> moved my belongings into my hall's room. I immediately felt at home, and I don't know if it's because I didn't bring any books with me or anything. I literally just moved in like my bedding and one set of Harry Potter books, like I and one string of fairy lights. Like I really didn't move it much in at all, um, and I don't know if it's because like I don't have per personal artifacts in that yet that I'm feeling that way. But I just didn't. Oh, yes. Get a particularly uh, great feeling, which. <laughs> I don't know, I shouldn't be concerned about it because obviously, yeah, I haven't moved all my stuff in and everything. But um, I I just didn't get the same good feeling that I got when I moved into halls. And last year was honestly the best year of my life. And I get concerned because I feel like I'm worried that I won't remember bits of it. Um, it was just such a good year that I, yeah. Um, also on the like process of sort of moving on from last year to this year, I think because last year was so good, I'm like, I feel an expectation for this year to live up to it. Um, I know I need to work harder at uni and I'm stressed already thinking about the level of responsibility I'm going to have. I managed to get onto the stage management module, which was like quite competitive to get onto, which I'm really excited about, which means alongside studying for musical theatre training, I'm also going to study uh, stage management. And through that, I'm hoping I get put on costume because uh, I really have just fallen in love with costume design and costume making. So it's something that I know I'm going to be able to put in the work for and do a good job. Um, but I know I need to step up my game as as far as it concerns uh, my actual musical theatre training because I, I didn't do myself justice last year. You know, I had a great time last year, but my health and just my effort that I put in, I just, I, I'm so used to skating by by the skin of my teeth and like not trying very hard for anything. Like the one thing I tried for, I got a first in, which was stage management. But uh, everything else, my grades weren't great and I've never got bad grades before. <laughs> so it was a bit of a wake up call for me that I need to actually try harder and, and put in the extra hours after class. Um, and that's something that I really want to do. But uh, there's a lot of things I want to move on from. Like last year, I've got to move on from just from like uh, the people and things like that. Not moving on from like people in the bad way, but like uh, moving on from the way things once were. And when I drove past halls, I just got such a weird feeling because like I, I hadn't thought about uni since maybe like properly since maybe like a couple of weeks after I first moved out and it's been so long since uh uni and everything now that I just feel very weird towards it and like like it didn't happen and there's some people that I'm not going to see again ever and like I'm never going to walk through like in my little uni room that, I, that felt so much so much like home for me and it's very hard to move on from that and I think once I've moved on from that I can then set up my new life in the new house and feel okay about it um and I guess at the moment like this video is so like incohesive like it doesn't make any sense but um like struggling with trying to keep my health okay and days where I can't move and then also trying to lose weight even though I really I don't know it's a hard there's so much stuff going on in my brain and I've got so much time to think about it which is why I spend all my days sewing and listening to podcasts because it keeps my brain busy and my hands busy and I just don't have to think um which is a very blissful nice feeling to not be able to think about things because um yeah I don't really know where I'm going with this video but like I wanted to explain why I haven't been around and I do want to get back into Potter content and filming with my camera not just my phone and giving you guys the content you deserve um and I'm I'm really excited to do some more of those Harry Potter character videos because I had a really good time filming that Harry one it's nice to get all of that emotion out, out about it because I don't really have anyone in real life that I can speak to in depth about the characters like I just feel like I, I talk about Harry Potter quite a lot but never in depth because a lot of people don't know it well enough to get into depth about it um but I just wanted to explain why it's been hard for me and that I'm not being lazy I, even though it just seems like I'm spending all my time sewing I am but there are reasons for it um and if you want to see um videos about my cosplays I really want to do like a semi-tutorial thing um for all of them that I've done so far so Peasant Belle, Yellow Ball Gown Belle and Cinderella when she's finished um because I'm really proud of them and I want to be able to show you guys how to do it like I learned to sew in literally I've been doing this for three months, I've made my own patterns for everything and there are some just really easy ways to do it and, I, and I've loved getting messages from you guys telling me that I've inspired them to like pick up their sewing machine again. It's honestly um, a really great skill to have just in life and there are some, you know, 
I'm not a skilled sewer. I've, I've, you know, I've learned some really basic stuff when I was very little and I've always done embroidery and things like that. But sewing on a machine and making my own clothes properly, I used to adapt a lot of clothes, but really taking clothes and making them, you know, making my own patterns out of clothes and really starting from scratch uh, has only been a very recent thing for me. And I've made some things um, that I'm really proud of. I'm really proud of Cinderella so far because it's a challenging cosplay. And the fact that I've managed to make it and, and design it by myself and everything I, I've been really proud of and I want to be able to share that with you guys and share my tips and things with you people so if you want that I'm more than happy to make videos as soon as um Ella's finished because I need to obviously be able to display them on my mannequin I've only got one mannequin but I'll give them to you if that's what you want and like I said um Laura's Always Sewing is my um Instagram for that if you want to follow that um also, I have some t-shirts and things on Teespring. They're not, like, me-based. They just say, like, keep pottering and, like, a little lightning bolt and stuff, which are really cool. So if you want to uh, look at them, check them out. Go follow my vlogging channel as well because I'm going to be posting on there. I just don't have anything to vlog of my life because I don't do anything these days. I still need to compile my second term at uni vlog, but that's a very daunting task. And I'm going to be posting maybe some singing covers and stuff on there because people have asked for them. So, yes, that kind of thing will be on there. And there will be more videos like this. I make the occasional tea video on this channel. Channel, but I feel like it doesn't really fit here anymore because my demographic audience is really Harry Potter based I don't think that many of you really care about what's happening in my life which is totally fine like you come here for Potter I should be giving you Potter but um, I know there is a percentage of you that does enjoy these two videos so yes I thought there was more I was meant to say but this has gone on for really long now it's gonna take me a long time to edit so um I'm gonna end it here but if there's anything specifically you want me to talk about in tea videos um please let me know so then i have some sort of direction to go in anyway thanks for all the support uh subscribe like this video and turn on my notification bell because really i don't skip stick to a schedule so you'll probably want to know when i upload um and yeah um follow my instagrams i have three <laughs> and twitter because uh twitter's where i post like most regularly probably um and my snapchat lozzy modo like lozzy modo from the hunchback of notre dame um, anyway, I will see you guys soon. Um, bye. I adding in bits while I edit, as usual, when do I not do this? I just wanted to quickly say, um, I posted a photo of my Ella cosplay on Twitter and pretty much every social media earlier. Um, and I then posted on Twitter another photo that was taken in my Ella cosplay that I wasn't happy with. And you can see that I'm kind of crying in the photo. <laughs> and it's just not a good angle for me and I wanted to post that because I just see a lot of stuff about people um people thinking that like you're vain for like posting stuff online and I know that with my original Ella cosplay pictures I posted saying a bit of a joke being like oh I did have a twirling video but body image was like nah so here are these photos because it's the truth I did have like a video of me twirling and the, the dress looked amazing but um I did not so <laughs> I didn't post it um but I posted that other photo because I wanted to be like what I show you online and what everyone shows everyone online isn't the truth necessarily and we all have bad angles and that's okay like it's not that it isn't even the truth either like everyone looks beautiful like and everyone like does amazing and I think it's amazing for everyone to support each other and I think it's crucial to remember that what we post online is a filtered version of our lives and you know if you looked at the photos originally of my Ella cosplay and I got lovely comments from everyone about it, you'd think I was very happy with everything and I wanted people to know that behind those two photos was a person crying in their back garden because they thought they looked fat because their corset didn't do up tight enough and and they had a bad photo and a bad video that made them look uh, not how they wanted to be. And I just thought it was important to let you guys know that and that's the reason why I posted those things and I want everyone to know that like it's normal like you know like I have a friggin spot here and I'm here with no makeup and I try to be as honest with you guys as possible because I don't want to show you my life through a filter even though I do because everyone does but um we're all real people and that's okay but yeah